for coming. I have, of course, yeah. I have wanted to do this presentation for eight years since we started doing this study club, and it took a while, but here we are now, and I'm really excited about it. For those of you who don't know me, I am Scott Suter. I am an editonist out in Sparks. I love all of you, and I love taking pictures. I have been taking pictures semi-professionally, slash for money, slash for fun. They, they knew. They knew. They, they had my name, and let's just go. So thank you guys outside. That would be fantastic. This is not actually, that microphone goes to my phone, not to this. So for any of you who have to leave early, I do not feel offended whatsoever. I am recording this. It'll be on my YouTube channel eventually. I will send that out to whoever needs it. So you will be able to watch this later. Um, I've been taking photos for a very, very long time. I love cameras. And I think it is an incredible thing that we can do as dentists to help our patients understand the conditions of their mouth and what we can do to make things better. So the first question everyone always has is why on earth do you talk about cameras so much? I am so happy to see so many cameras at the tables around here. If you guys have not grabbed one of these yet, I do have little cheat sheets for what the settings should be for intraoral and extraoral. I tried to put them next to any camera that I saw, but if you don't have one yet, I've got a bunch of them up here. Thank you to my fabulous office manager, Jenny, for laminating them. The reason why we take this is because this will probably change your practice more than anything else you could do in a 30 minute lecture. This will change it more than a cone beam will, it'll change it more than a CAD CAM machine. This allows you to tell patients exactly what their mouth looks like in a way that they have never seen before. So let's talk about the main benefits. Number one, it allows them to understand what the hell is going on inside their mouth. I'm gonna show you an example in just a little bit, but when I started dental school, I had a great roommate who was in his last year he was a fantastic photographer. His name's Chris Nelson. I'll put his Instagram and stuff up later. You guys should all follow him because he's amazing at what he does. And he has taught me a ton about photography. But what he would do, when we would be in dental school, it would take three three-hour appointments for a new patient exam. Every dentist in, there, in here is nodding, but that's literally how slow it was back in the day. This is for the assistants and hygienists in the room. That's how slow it was. <laughs> and what Chris would do is he loved photos. So he would take a full set of photos at that very first appointment. And then it would take him three hours to do probings and x-rays. And then the patient would come back for a second appointment. At that second appointment, what he would do is give them this beautiful 8 by 11 photo paper and say, here, I just want to show you the pictures. Oh, you know what? Um, I forgot something. Let me go to supply. And he would go have a cup of coffee. And 10 minutes later, he would come back and the patient had the treatment plan all ready to go. Oh my gosh, what is this black spot? Why is this tooth crooked? Is this my mouth? I've never seen this before. It's why he did more production than I think anybody in UOP history. <laughs> he is absolutely incredible. And that's what I want to have for all of you. It also is great for treatment planning, especially the complex cases. How many of you want to see what your patient looks like, but all you have is x-rays? Well, where would their teeth go? You don't know without having pictures. If you use a lab or if you have a lab tech in your office, even if you do CAD CAM, it is so much better to be able to send them a picture with the stump shade, the teeth next to it, and four shade tabs than just writing... A1 on a lab slip. How many of you think an A1 on a lab slip is gonna be a perfect match every single time? Mark's got this, he's down. <laughs> Any of you who have ever worked with a lab tech, they love photos. It's to the point where if they're upset with you, they will have the patient come to their lab to take the photos that you will not take. <laughs> it is incredible how much better your restorations will look by taking photos. Documentation, dear God, the number of times I've had patients tell me, oh, you ground away my tooth and there's now metal showing. And I can say, no, you grind your teeth and your PFM was showing metal before I even did anything. And then they stopped talking. It's absolutely incredible. Also, if you ever have any issues with insurances of, why did you put that buildup in? When you send them a picture of a tooth that's halfway destroyed, no one's arguing with you. It is a stop to the conversation. And then if you're into it, I do teach a lot. I have a YouTube channel. I could not do any of this without the help of photography and videos. I'm not going to go into videos tonight because it's a pain in the ass. But let's talk about the number one reason all of you should be taking pictures on all of your patients. It's case acceptance. Your case acceptance rates will skyrocket by taking pictures. Um, Rob, you agreed to be my guinea pig. You guys started to... <laughs> guys, the photo's coming later. I, there's a great photo up in my promise. Yeah, it's the one I took from the website. <laughs> How much do photos help you with treatment planning and case acceptance? Um, so I've been doing it in the yeah. Now, being able to show photos, 
I love hearing that. For the dentists in the room, we're going to take our summer break for Spear here, and we'll be back in September. I'm happy to say that Dr. Johnny Winfield has agreed to give us 30 minutes on photography for Instagram, which is how to make things look extra, extra special to show off to your friends, show off to patients, show off to your website. So make sure you're there for that September meeting. As promised, show you what Chris does today. So I texted him yesterday. I was like, hey, do you still have that 8 on the half by 11 thing? This is what he does now. By the way, if you guys want to follow him, this is his stuff just on dentures. Whoever gets their phone out right now is a freak, and I love you. And then this is his Instagram channel for his, the rest of his photos. I highly recommend following him. He's absolutely incredible. But this is what he gives to patients now. Patient name in the middle, the date of the examination, showing the, the condition of their mouth, talking about the observations of what he sees, and then talking about the plan and what he wants to do in the future. For any of the dentists who want this, I will send you his template. He makes it very easy to drag and drop pictures into this. You give this to a patient, there's no questions ever about what the condition of their mouth is, what the plan's going to be. It takes him, he said, five minutes to put this together. And this is way better than something that Dentrix points out that says, oh, this is an extraction. That's a D so, so, and so. This is a root canal. That's a D so, so, and so. This is a much better way to treatment plan. And then he'll also show the pictures intraorally on the side showing where all the conditions are and what the issues are that he's going to address. Cool. If anyone wants that Instagram thing later, I'll be up here and you can totally take it. So when do we take this? You can take it as much as you want. You can take it at the new patient exam, recall exams. If you're seeing a restoration that's falling down, show, hey, remember that chipping on the margin? Now it's a lot bigger. Oh, that crown, that gap is increased in size. Can you see this? This makes it so much easier for patients to understand what's going on. It is great for restorative, especially if you want to teach or show patients what's going on. But here is my ask of you. We are six minutes into this presentation, and I have one ask. I am paying for everybody's drinks and food because I love all of you. I want you all to do one thing for me. There are a lot of cameras in this room. I think, who does not have a camera at their office? Thank God. Well, we'll fix that. Okay. <laughs> all right. What I would like for you is for the next two weeks, every new patient exam, take the six photos we're about to show you how to do. That's all I want. If you hate it after the two weeks, have your dentist yell at me. That's fine. If you love it, still have your dentist yell at me. I don't care. <laughs> but it will make such a difference in how you practice and you talk to your patients. Now, one thing you may all want to do is consider charging for photos. <laughs> I had to pay. The amount of money I had to pay for this picture of Dr. Vong is, I still can't walk straight, but it's amazing. Um, <laughs> uh, Rob was very gracious when I was putting this presentation together. <laughs> when I was putting this presentation together, I asked him if he could be my plant in the audience to bouncing off of, and he said yes, very nicely. Rob, what are you guys charging for photos right now? 50? 50 bucks, okay. There is no insurance in the world that is covering photos. This is what we call a filter. The reason that I have incredible treatment success when I present treatment to patients is because how many of my patients don't know they're coming into my office for a root canal? None of them, zero. You guys have done all the filtering for me, and then my front desk staff says, here's exactly what it's gonna cost, here's what it's gonna be like. You all do not get that benefit. You get patients coming in saying, well, I want Zoom whitening. And Invisalign. And then they come in and they have pockets of nine everywhere. You know, we, we see this all day long. This is a filter that you can, if you want to take your practice to the next level and do more of a whole health approach to dentistry, do this. It's 50 bucks. If they're not going to pay the 50 bucks for photos, they sure as hell aren't going to pay $20,000 to get their mouth where they want to be. Right there, you can eliminate the patients who will not work with your practice philosophy. So you do not have to do this. I think it's a great idea. I love that they do this. How many patients do you have that say no? Yeah. Front desk staff, Rob, they're not gonna ever hit Rob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, by the time they get to you, you're good. That's what I'm saying. By the time they get to me, they've already told everybody else. I mean, like they never get to me if they say no. Yeah. Okay, that's perfect. So you can also convert patients. So Something to consider. You can make up the number in your head what it would be. All right. Next question everybody asks is, who is going to take them? Anyone. 
all of you can point and shoot. How many of you have taken a photo in the last 24 hours using your cell phone? Okay, in the last 48, how many of you don't have kids or dogs? Come on, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but literally, it can be anyone. If you're a front desk, if you're a sterile tech, if you're a hygienist, if you're a whatever, you can point the camera at the person and push the button. And we'll show you how to do that tonight. Ideally though, it shouldn't be the doctor. I think this is a benefit that staff can do all day long. Um, Adam, when's the last time you took photos on patients? Uh -huh. When are you in residency? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go over the three main complaints I have heard over the last eight years of why I cannot implement photography into my office. Can you guess what they are? Too busy? Not enough time. Not enough time? It's the same thing, dude. <laughs> Fair enough. Training. Cool. All right. The one you guys missed. You don't have to pay for the cameras, but the docs do. It's too expensive. Those cameras are so expensive. If you sell two more crowns in a year, you've paid for the cameras. Okay? That's how easy this is. The cameras will pay for themselves the first time you use it. Take the photos for the next two weeks. You will see how much higher your treatment plan case acceptance rate is, and you will be amazed. I do not have time. Do you know what we don't have time for? To explain complex treatment plans for 40 minutes to every single patient. What we do have time for is to do something like my buddy Chris does and hand it to them. If you have any questions, take this home. Go talk to your spouse, to your loved ones. Here it all is. I don't have to be there. I'm going to go home and do something fun. And eventually, you're going to realize, hey, this is a great way to make my mouth and my whole body far healthier. And the final one is my staff doesn't want to do it. Staff members, you are all here, and I don't think it's just for the free food and drinks, but if it is, that's totally fine. I still love all of you. <laughs> How many of you would like to help your patients understand what's going on inside their mouths better? Who would not like to do that? All right, you're all awesome, good. <laughs> so to the doctors looking around, your staff wants to do this. They want to be more involved. They want to be part of the team. And this is a way to make your staff feel part of the team and get patients on board as well. All right, the part everyone cares about, how the hell do we use these things? They're scary, they're heavy, there's a weird flash. The and somehow my camera decided to stop working. It said that the this was full, but anyway. Let's go on with the presentation. There's just a few slides that we missed, so I'll go through them right now so we can make sure everybody has everything. So this is one of my favorite quotes. The best camera is the one that you have with you, and it's true. I take a lot of photos with this thing right here for sure. I take a lot with the, photo, the camera that I'm recording this on, on my other cameras. But that being said, is it the best camera for dental photography? So let's look at a few different things to consider here. And really what we're considering is an iPhone versus a dedicated dental camera. So the benefits of the iPhone are it is very easy to use. It's literally point and press a button uh, with a the camera. There's a lot more that needs to be done. However, the thing to remember is that neither of these know that you're going to be taking pictures of teeth. And when you do that, the requirements and the settings do have to change. So let's talk about the first thing here, which is resolution. So resolution is a measurement of how large the sensor is that's gathering all the light and then also the pixels that are inside there. Let's look at a couple of examples. My brother is a veterinarian and he gets to have cute dogs around him all the time. And so this is one of the cute dogs that he had. And I took a picture using my iPhone. You know, you can see it's a cute little fluffy Ewok looking dude. Look at what the big camera can do. Which one looks better? Clearly, and if you were if if, if the uh, live camera had actually works, you would hear a lot of awes right now because, of course, it's an adorable puppy. But the reason why this photo is so much better than the one taken with my iPhone is, well, the camera is the size of the dog. <laughs> the other thing is that the sensor size is so much larger that it can gather a lot more light. So when we look at sensors, this is a overlay of the size of a sensor. So the camera that's recording this right now is a full frame sensor at an 8064 square millimeters. And even the most recent iPhone, I've, I've used this image multiple times over the years of presenting to different groups, and I've updated on the right hand side what the current ones are. The iPhone 14 Pro Max, which has one of the best cameras in the right now, that is at 
barely 72 millimeters. So compare that to the cheapest dental camera you might use is going to be an APS-C. That is five times less resolution than the cheapest one. And if you're going to get a nicer one that's full frame, it's going to be 12 times less surface area to actually absorb everything. So that's the first thing to consider. Thankfully, my assistant Jenny caught that the camera wasn't recording. We're going to hop right back in and talk about this, which is the difference in the flash power between the iPhone and a Canon. Well, an iPhone can put out 50 lumens, which is pretty good. These can put out 1.4 million. This number is bigger than that number. I have four-year-olds. They listen to Miss Rachel all day long. Do you, do you tell? <laughs> the amount of power they pull. A whopping 0.55 watts. This is 60. This number is bigger than this number. All right, let's go. <laughs> now, uh, shout out to Dr. Thomas over here at 4.30 today. I added this to my presentation. There is a device that does seem pretty cool that you can add on to your phone to take uh, better pictures because the light you'll see in a second is the most important thing. This attaches via the MagSafe attachment that iPhones have that snaps into place and gives you the light. So this is the website for it. If you want it, there it is. Otherwise, just text me. It is $650. So it is not cheap, unfortunately. However, if all you're going to do is take it with your iPhone, this is a way to make the quality much higher of the photos that you're taking. One thing I wanted to take away, this is from that website. It helps them to really accept the treatment that they need. Treatment planning is not about selling stuff so you can go buy a boat. It's about helping patients understand something very complicated so they don't have worse outcomes moving forward. Photography allows you to bridge that gap because all of you know more than the general public does about teeth and the consequences of not taking care of it. Photos help bridge that knowledge gap between the ever general person and all, what all of you know. All right, let's go into the hard part, which is the terms to know about taking photos and about cameras. The very first thing is exposure. I think you all have taken enough photos with your iPhone. You know what an underexposed picture looks like. It's dark. You know what an overexposed picture looks like. It's too bright. And you all know what a properly exposed picture looks like. There you go. That's a pretty picture of a rose. What you may not know is what comprises the exposure. So it's three different things. You have the ISO, you have the f-stop, and the shutter speed. So let's go through each of those. ISO is the simplest because in every modern camera made after probably 2005, you set it to auto and the camera figures out and it's pretty damn solid, okay? This is a photo taken at a low ISO. This is the photo taken at a high ISO. For those of you in the back, can you see there's some weird stuff, okay? <laughs> There wasn't a swarm of locusts that came in front of the camera when I took this. What this is, zooming in, ISO is a measurement of how sensitive the sensor inside the camera is to light. How they make it more sensitive is they take the electricity and they throw it through the roof. When it does that, it creates all of this junk inside here, which is known as noise. So when you look at the camera, a smaller number means that there is lower sensitivity to light, but there's less noise, which is a good thing. A bigger number means that it's more sensitive to light, but there's higher noise. Before um, Apple came out with their, like, what's it called, night vision or the long exposure? You've all done it, the night mode type thing. Remember when you take a picture at, at night, like you're out at a club or something, and it looks absolutely terrible? It's because of the ISO. <laughs> also, alcohol. Those are the two reasons why. <laughs> so what we need in dentistry is we need decent sensitivity, but we can make up for that by using a flash. That's why even with the nicest phone camera, you're still not gonna make up for the power of these flashes, but there is a way now, thank you, Mark. And you wanna have low noise so that a patient isn't saying, why are there locusts in my teeth? For those of you who have scratched mirrors and you show the pictures to the patient, how many of them are like, what's that black spot? Why is there a black spot in my gums? There's something wrong with my gums. And you tell them, no, there's a scratch in the mirror, but there's my gums, what's wrong with them? <laughs> All right, the next thing is shutter speed. This is probably the easiest for everybody to understand. Shutter speed is how long the image is open to light. So this is a photo I took. Damn it, why did we go so far forward? This is a photo I took in San Francisco when I was still there. You can tell it was a while ago because that bridge has now been demolished. But that was a 30 second exposure from Treasure Island on a tripod similar to that one. And you can see, you cannot even see the cars here. But the movement is very pretty. You got the whites coming into San Francisco, the reds leaving, but the bridge is stable. Couple that with a photo I took outside of New York City. This is from a plane. So best tripod in the world is not going to stabilize a photo taken 
at a 300 mile per hour moving plane. This is a much faster speed in order to capture the image. So if you have a smaller number, which means in seconds how long it's open, you're going to have less light, but it will stop any motion you have. If it's a bigger number, so more seconds, more light, and it's going to be blurry. In dentistry, we need light. So that's where the flash comes in. We don't want the pictures to be blurry. That's probably one of the more common issues that I'd say for people who take photos, blurry is probably one of the most common ones. It's one of two things, is either focus or the someone messed with the shutter speed. All right, the final one, which is by far the hardest one to explain, is f-stop. Beautiful picture of a rose. You can't tell what's going on in the background. I, uh, Apple recreates this by doing portrait mode. Use the software to make it look like this. Couple that with this. You can now see there's a rose in the background. There's stuff in the back there. And what this is a measurement, it's of two different things. If you have a smaller number, it means more light hits the sensor, but less of the image is in focus. All right, that's how Apple does portrait mode. That's how fancy cameras make it so you look really pretty is they make the background completely disappear. A bigger number means less light hits the sensor, but more of it is in focus. This is why this is the most important concept to understand for dental photography, because we need light but we also need it in focus. So how do we do that? Unless I put flash on every single one of these, you have to have a flash working. <laughs> Just to show you how the aperture actually works, when you take a picture and it's wide open, the glass is all the way open. When you take a picture and it's stopped down, these little blades come out and make this hole really, really tiny. That makes it so less light hits it, but it also makes it so more of it's in focus. This is probably the other most common mistake that people make is they put the cameras in auto because they don't know what they're doing and the camera doesn't either and it doesn't know that it's taking a picture of teeth. And so it just puts the canine in focus or maybe the front teeth and the back teeth are all blurry. We've all seen this, right? Good, okay. So how do we set up the camera? Well, there are two different ways to do this. We can use our God-given brains and critical thinking skills and make it so that everybody learns everything about photography or you can grab one of these and put it next to the camera and have a post-it note that tells you exactly what it is. <laughs> I prefer both, so you have a backup and you can use your beautiful brains. For an example of this, how many of you were at Dr. Galea's fantastic derby party? Excellent. I was asked to take pictures from there and I said, you know what, I'll give your team one of my cameras, I'll get it set up, everything will be great. So this is my lovely wife. I told her to make a face just to test. I was trying to get the light all good. She's going to be so pissed off I showed this, I know. <laughs> She's going to be so pissed off. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't. Look at the beautiful surroundings. It's a beautiful light. Yeah. Okay. I gave it to his team and none of, is there any from Galea's office here? All right, good. I gave it to his team and somehow in two minutes, they had made it so it was a video. Don't know how. And then this was the next picture they took. The point is, even if you as the dentist set the camera up and hand it to your staff, they're going to do weird shit and all of a sudden take videos <laughs> and make it look terrible. <laughs> of the 50 pictures they took, 45 of them were of the staff, of Galea's staff, and the only three that were good were the ones that I took when I got my camera back at the end of the night. <laughs> all right. Look at your cameras. Everybody grab the cameras. If you don't have one, I'm happy to hand them out. Jenny or Miriam, can you grab one of either my cameras or Walmart's cameras and just give one to each table? All right. Cameras are set via pretty much the same way. There is going to be a dial to show you which mode you are in. All right. So the language is different based on whether or not it's a Nikon, a Sony, a Canon, but they're all pretty similar here. So yeah. I know. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. All right. So does everybody have a camera at their table to at least look out if you haven't seen this before? Awesome. So some of them will have dials like this. Some of them will have screens like this. This is my camera if anyone has this one out there. And you'll notice it, it, it's, if you don't know how to switch settings on a camera, look for something that looks like a wheel. These change all the settings that you have. So let's go through them. Auto means you're letting the camera think for you. The camera does not know you want to take a dental picture. It's not designed for that. It doesn't know what it's gonna do. It's going to look terrible. Aperture priority allows you to change the f-stop. Shutter speed priority allows you to change the shutter speed. Program mode is like a slightly smarter version of auto. 
But the really one that you want to shoot in is manual mode because this is a situation where you know more than the camera does. You know you're taking pictures of teeth. These cameras were not necessarily designed to take pictures of teeth, so you have to tell it how to take pictures of teeth. So first step is put it in manual mode. Second thing is the flash. This is one where it's pretty hard to change, thankfully, but most modern flashes, if they're paired to the camera, it's very straightforward. You want to look for something that either says TTL or ETTL. This is the one thing the camera is very good at doing. You tell it what the settings are gonna be and what you want the exposure, and the camera will figure out how much light to fire. This is really, really useful. You very, very rarely have to switch it out and change things. Um, and it does work in manual mode, that it knows what's going on. As far as the other settings, this is the one that we haven't talked on yet, which is white balance. But your ISO aperture and shutter speed are the three ones you got to check every single time to make sure the camera isn't putting out weird images. White balance is something we have to do on digital cameras to tell it what is white. So right now, my phone is looking at, well, me, let's be real, but also my shirt to say, this is what white is. And it's matching everything so that it doesn't look weird behind it. In general, if you have a camera that was manufactured after, let's say, 2005, it is usually smart enough. You leave it in auto, it's going to know what to do. It shouldn't be messed up. If it is, give me a call. It's something weird happened. But auto is usually good enough. However, sometimes people put it in weird modes, like underwater. You're not taking pictures of people's teeth underwater. It's going to look really funky. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Once again, another really easy one, the ISO, which is the sensitivity. These modern cameras are very good at figuring out how sensitive the sensor needs to be. Leave it in auto, it'll figure it out. Most of the time it goes to 400 and it's totally fine. All right. This is the ones where you need to remember it. This is what's on these cards. You can take pictures of any of these slides. I don't care. It'll be online eventually. You'll be able to all rewatch this if you really want to. I'd appreciate the views and the subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Okay. Um, <laughs> usually, I'm shooting at 1 over 100. You can do 125, you can do 80. It's not going to make a difference. This is fast enough that it's going to stop any motion from the patient moving or you moving or their tongue moving and get it in focus and it will work. You don't want to do lower than this by a bunch. You don't want to do higher than this by a bunch. This works pretty damn well most of the time. If you look on the camera, excuse me, you'll either see a little F in front of there or it'll be a slash. Most of the time, if you look at both of these examples, there's an F in front of it for the aperture. The other number is going to be the number of the, um, the shutter speed and how fast it is. If it is a big number, it is one over that. So this is one one hundredth of a second that the shutter is open. If it says an S next to it, that's in seconds, it's going to be really bad. You don't want a 10 second exposure when you're taking pictures of your patients. It's not going to come out very well. Aperture. This is probably the most important one. Remember, most of the time we're taking pictures this close inside the mouth. We need to make sure everything is in focus from 8 and 9 all the way back to 15 and 2. The way you do that is by having the aperture shut down so everything is in focus. In general, most of the lenses that I've seen when walking around this room can do f22. That's how I've always taught it. If you want to learn to change it, talk to me after. But I'm trying to get everybody the very basic. This is the easiest way to take photos and implement it into your office. All right. Any questions so far? You guys are all super smart. I love all of you. All right. Once again, here's the reminder that when it's wide open, more light, blurry background, shut down, less light, all in focus. The recommendations I have are going to change based on whether or not you're taking a picture outside of the mouth of their face, or if you're taking a picture inside the mouth of a tooth or an arch. When you're outside of the face, you need to have it be a little bit more wide open. The ring flashes we have are not very powerful in comparison to the big, big flashes that you use for portrait photography. So you actually need to have help the camera out a little bit and make it so that more of the uh, light hits it. It's fine if the ears are blurry in a picture of their face. And you're usually going to be stepping farther back. And there's some physics for the nerds in the room who want to learn about optical physics. I will talk to you all day long about diffraction softening and all that fun stuff. Jenny's already rolling her eyes. I can see it from here. Okay. Um, <laughs> But here are your recommendations that if you're shooting for either close up or in the mirror, F22 is a great way to do it. If you're doing portraits, 5.6 to 8 works really, really well. That's what's on these cards. I try to make it simple. Any questions? Excellent. All right. How do we change settings? I already told you. 
Rob. No, how do you change settings if you want to change? Oh. You're a terrible plant. <laughs> All right, how we change settings is we look for scroll wheels. They may be on the front. They may be on the back. They may be on the top. But look for a scroll wheel. If you want to figure out what setting needs to change, move it and look at the numbers. If it goes, if it goes up, well, it's that one. If it goes down, well, it's that one. It's pretty easy. You're not going to break it, I promise. I've given this presentation many times at dental schools and to multiple offices. This is how you turn the camera on. Does anyone need help turning the camera on? I promise I will make fun of you publicly. You can find me after, but look for the switch that says on, or perhaps this one that says on, or this one that also says on. Yes, sir. There is a second switch on some things that is a power saving mode. What? Which is the flat? Well, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. I, I'm going to go around. What, what we're going to do, it, the presentation is almost over. What we're going to do after this is I'm going to go down to each group. Oh, also, where's Wellmerink's team? Raise your hand. All right. They take photos way more than I do. They are fantastic about it. Look for somebody in their cool little tooth jacket. If you need any help and I'm busy, they will get you all set up exactly as I would do. Um, team Perio, you guys here too? Team Perio, talking to you. Raise your hands. Fantastic. You guys take photos all the time. Sierra Smiles, raise your hand. You guys are all at the same damn table. This is fantastic. All right, go to that table if you need help with your cameras because they are all the ones who do this all the time and know what's going on. <laughs> I had to call in a few more ringers, you guys. All right, let's talk about the lens settings because this is the other one. Everybody turn the camera to the side, either to the right or the left, depending on if it's a Nikon or a Canon, and look at your settings, which is not... There we go. All right. Depending on your camera, you're going to have a few different things. One will say limit. One will say full. What this does is it tells the lens how far to look. In general, for close-up photography, you want to make sure it says full. Or sometimes it'll say like 0.8 to infinity versus 3 meters to infinity. You want it to be as close as possible because you're going to be in people's face taking the pictures. Make sure it's like that. I'll go around and talk to everybody. For close-up pictures, manual focus is definitely the best. I know everybody hates hearing that. It is the best way to do it. If you're really, really good, you can make autofocus work. Most of the time, manual focus is going to be your best option. When you take the picture outside, you can switch it to autofocus. The camera will figure it out. Cameras are great at taking pictures of people's faces. That is what they are designed to do. So I'll go make sure we go around to all the office, uh, different tables, talk about how to use those. Final couple things here are the mirrors. If you have not bought mirrors before, these are from Photomed. These are what I have in my office. I'm pretty sure I've seen a lot of Photomed products tonight here. A um, couple things about it for sterilizing. They are incredibly easy to scratch. My recommendation is you take the mirror and coat it in a paper towel and then put it in the sterilized packet after that, exactly like Adam, sh Adam showed that again. Notice there is a piece of paper towel around all of that. This helps a ton to prevent paper uh, other issues. Also, if you've never used them before, those with handles are amazing because you can have the patient hold it instead of you. Patients are going to be far harder on themselves. will stretch them out way more than you would dare doing, and it allows it so that you do not have to have two people take the picture. You can just do one. Uh, final thing as far as the equipment that you need, you're going to need retractors. How many of you have metal? How many have plastic? All right, I got both. They both work well. Choose your favorite. It doesn't matter. Cool. All right, which images do I want you to take? We go into cosmetic dentistry. There's 45,000 images they want you to take. This is all I want. I want six very simple pictures. It tells you exactly what needs to be done. You take a picture of them smiling, so you know where are their teeth in terms of their, their smile. Do they show no teeth? Do they show all gums? That's going to help a ton. Maxilla, mandible, left. Right, and then this is probably the most useful, retracted, showing just the teeth with them teeth apart. Teeth closed are sometimes useful. I know ortho will use this a lot for overjet overbite, but for general dentists, this is the one you want. You want to see what do the maxillary teeth look like, what do the mandibular teeth look like. Do these six, six pictures on every single patient, and you will be amazed at how good your treatment plan acceptance is. 
When you are taking any of these images, it is important to be in line and parallel with the subject. Someone hand me a camera. Okay. So, if I'm taking a picture of Dennis, how good do you think this picture is going to be? How good do you think this picture is going to be? Ladies, you love this one. The upshot? Oh, yeah. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You want to be parallel with the patient. Yes. I am 6'4". Most staff members are not my height. So do you think you should do my picture standing? Amy can. That's it. <laughs> Everybody else, do it with the patient sitting in the chair so that you're comfortable and you adjust the patient to make sure that you're parallel with them. So move and make sure that you're in line. This is important for pictures outside of the mouth and this is especially important for pictures inside of the mouth. You wanna make sure that you are parallel with the teeth in whatever you do. Thank you. All right, that's the extra oral, oral settings. It's on the sheet. I put it in a bunch of times, so hopefully all of you remember it. What's our f-stop? Yes, what's the shutter speed? Yay, you guys are so good, I'm so proud of you. All right, intro oral shots. You want to retract them. The team at Wellbeyond took these of me. Um, these are my teeth, yeah. And even after looking at these, they're like, fuck, I gotta bleach these things. Um, <laughs> those are my teeth, yeah, it's real bad. We're, we're working on it, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Oh, I know. It's we. I, I, anyway, you can see sometimes it's useful to do the over close, the close down. Sometimes it's useful to do open. Choose what you want for buckle retracted. The way we're going to do this, I'll go around to each table and kind of show you. The idea is you should not shoot straight in at the teeth. These should all be mirror shots. Do not shoot straight in at the teeth. These should all be mirror shots. Should you guys take this in the mirror or straight in at the teeth? Mirror shots, you guys are so good. Rob's not, Rob's the worst plant ever. I, you guys don't know what I paid for that picture. I mean, just, all right. And then retracted arch views, these are probably my favorite to talk with other dentists because it shows what's going on with the arch form, what the restorations are. It's a very, very useful shot. And for this one, definitely in the mirror, definitely retracted and we'll go from there. All right, I'm gonna leave this up so you guys can all take pictures, whatever you need. One thing I did not mention, if you are buying a camera, the good news is most new cameras have something called a custom function, which means you can set it to always have the same settings. That way it doesn't matter who picks up the camera, as long as you switch it back to custom one, it'll be at 122. Custom two will be 105.6. So there are ways to make it so that it's foolproof. I think all of you are smart enough to understand all of this, but all right. Let's go around to the tables. Any questions before we start taking pictures on people? All right, how many of you need retractors and mirrors? Raise your hands. Walmart ranks team, you're in charge. All right, I think everybody has them. What I would like to do is have the patient be one of the doctors at your table. I think there's a doctor at every table. We gotta get, no, Amy's there. Yeah, and we'll go from there, cool.